welcome to my one handy kitchen. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make chicken and mushroom and leek pot pies. If you're a vegetarian you don't actually need obviously to put the chicken in. Um, this will still work you just increase the amount of mushroom that you put into this. Uh, increase uh, the amount of leek that you put into this and you can then make an, a vegetarian option. First of all I'm going to make my pastry. I won't show all of this because I've done this um, several times in videos. Uh, there is a slight difference today. I have my new piece of kit and it is a Bosch multi-talent and I am so impressed with this so so impressed with this it's got 50 functions it's got a grinder it's got um a whisker it's got you name it it does it so i'm going to be using this from now on because i can just operate this with one hand no longer do i need to use my chin here we go in the bowl here i have 500 grams of flour if you can get self-raising flour use that if not just use all-purpose flour um, and pop into that two teaspoons of baking powder. In the bowl here I have, um, this is vegetable shortening. Um, we've used that before in videos uh, and that gives you that vegetarian option. So here we go. This is just solid vegetable oil or hydrogenated vegetable oil for the pastry. I'm not using butter in this, but you can use half butter if you prefer. Okay, so I'm going to pop the lid on and I'm going to blitz this. Just going to knock it back down if necessary. Look, you can see the consistency of this. I've got my shortening has worked its way all the way through the pastry. Pop in some water, just a little drizzle round with some water. Okay, so I've blended this now until it's gone into one solid lump. So I'm gonna place that into a bowl. And sometimes I struggle. There we are. So we've made our pastry. Now, I'm going to make the sauce and the filling for the pies. I've already started to chop some veg, um, but I'm gonna show you how I do my leaves. Now, this is literally on my board, homemade board, and I literally cut it down the middle and then chop. On the smaller ones, I'll just do slices and then pop these into a bowl. And there you go, that's the leeks. All, all done. Very, very, very quick to do. And very easy to do with one hand if you have the board with these spiky bits in. Okay, the last thing I'm going to cut up here um, is two chicken breasts and um, if you go for the vegetarian options I have mushrooms here um, that I've already chopped up very similar to what I've done will be doing here and um, just increase double the mushroom that you put in and leave out the chicken so first thing I'm going to do is cut this into manageable strips as you can see, it's staying on those spikes there. So, I'm going to cut through the middle of this. You do need a sharp knife for this, obviously. Then, then I'm just going to cut myself some small squares off of that. And all you need to do is work your way through the chicken until you finished it. And there we have it. There's our chicken. Now you don't want humongous bits. I'm cutting 
quite small um, because once it goes into the sauce and our pie, we don't want great big lumps of chicken. Okay, today I'm going to be using the wok to make um, or prepare the vegetables in. Um, I've got my um, cooker on quite high. Once we're sizzling away here, I'm going to pop in my mushrooms. And I'm just going to give those a bit of a coat up here. Then I'm going to pop my leeks in. Now all we're doing is softening these down um, so that they are nice and ready to go into our sauce. It's always a good idea to roast uh, vegetables for flavour really. While they're doing that, I'm going to put in a sprinkle of garlic granules um, because it really gives it a little bit of flavour. We've also got here just black pepper. I'm going to sprinkle that over the top. Also, just a little bit of salt to help bring those juices out. Well, you can see these have softened down, they've turned dark green, and it absolutely smells divine in my kitchen. It will depend how you like your leeks, um, how long you saute this for. Um, I've done this for about five minutes, four or five minutes, and I'm happy with that, but that's ready to go. I'm going to take this out now and place it in a bowl. I'm not going to add anything else into the pan at this stage. In goes my chicken. All I'm looking for is to seal this so that it can white. Again, I quite like my garlic. I'll give it a little bit of garlic, a little bit of seasoning with the salt. And again, if I can find it, and it doesn't shoot across the room, yes. A little bit of more black pepper. That is all you need to do here. Can you see that? That's searing beautifully. We don't want to cook this all the way through because the chicken will be totally dry once we put it in the pie. But we do need to get this seared. Once you're happy that you've seared that, you're going to put all your vegetables back in again and all the juice that has come out of those. And give it a good stir. Now how good is that looking so far? Honestly, if you can smell my kitchen at the moment, it is beautiful. Right, we're going to pop this now to one side while we make the sauce. Into um, a fairly large saucepan, I'm going to put, this is 450 mils of milk. Traditionally, you would make a roux for this, um, to make this white sauce. Uh, I really struggle with that, so I'm just showing you an alternative way of making this sauce, and it works really well for me. Into that, I'm placing some butter to make it nice and creamy. I also have corn flour. Um, we call it maizena in France. It's essentially cornstarch. Now I'm going to use a slotted spoon for this because um, what I want is a nice smooth mix, not um, lumpy. And the cornstarch needs to be stirred all the way through this before it gets anywhere near your heat. Into that I'm going to pour a couple of teaspoons of salt and again my little sprinkle of garlic because I do like my garlic in it but that's completely optional. The last thing I'm going to add to this is a teaspoon of mustard. I'm using Dijon because I really like the mustard. Give it all a stir and then we're going to pop it onto the heat. 
This is very much like making custard. If you've ever made um, powdered custard, it's the same sort of principle. You need to keep this moving. Um, and just wait for it to heat up. If you don't keep it moving, it's going to burn on the bottom and that will taint all of your milk. There we go. Right, we're starting to get really thick here. I've turned the temperature down um, just while I work that corn flour in and get myself a really nice smooth sauce. There we are. That is looking good. It looks just like mustard, but the mustard's given it a nice little fl flavour. Into that, I'm going to put a handful of cheese. Then, just stir that through. We're not making a cauliflower cheese, so please, not too much. If you're using cheddar, you want a tiny bit. It's literally to give that a little bit more flavour. Okay, I'm going to turn my oh, cooker off, and I'm just going to stir that till my cheese melts through. Now, that didn't take long, did it? What I then want to do is pour my sauce over my cooked veg. Then using my maris, I'm going to stir this all together until it's very nice. Don't forget we've got all the juices um, that we've made as well in this. Now that is looking good. Beautiful. A lovely white sauce. And we have our chicken, mushrooms um, and leeks running through that. At this stage, taste, because you may need to add seasoning. But that is perfect. I think the weights that I've given will actually be just right for this. I've got my pastry in the fridge cooling down. Now I need to leave this to go completely cold before we do anything else. So I'll see you in a little while. My mix for my pies has cooled right down now. My pastry is nicely chilled. So now we're just gonna put them together. I buy these tins, um, they're just little pot pie tins. And I buy these by packs of 50 on uh, Amazon. They're really good. Uh, what I can do is I can fill these, not cook them, and just portion them out, put them in the freezer, flat freeze, um, and then get out as many as I need. First of all, I'm going to flour my board. I've gone back to this one because the other one that I tried out wasn't so very good. I'm going to get myself a piece of pastry. Now, I already know the size of these tins. They're about six centimetres. Um, they're certainly enough for one person. So I'm gonna roll that out. Just that little bit of pastry. I always roll too big, but that's good because what I'm going to need to do is trim the outside of this anyway. Take my tin and my pastry, pop it over the top. And then I'm going to ease that down a bit, just so I don't poke holes in it. There we go. I'm going to work my way around it. What I don't want is holes like that down the sides, because what will happen is that will stick to my pie tin, and I'm never going to get it out. Or if I do, it won't be pretty. So there we go. Flatten that down on top. And then using my knife, I'm just going to trim that pastry round. Same again. I used the last piece of pastry that I used because this will bear rolling as many times as you need to really. But two is perfect. It's not going to affect your pastry at all. I'm expecting to get at least six pies from the original ingredients that I gave you. Then all you do is trim your pastry around the edge. Like this. Just to make sure that's down properly there. 
because I want to trim this knot, massacre it, put that to one side. There we go. Taking a little drop of water and a pastry brush, and then going to scoop out, make sure you get some meat into that. Scoop out and fill my pie without making as much mess as I tend to do. That would be even better. I'm going to take that off because that's, oh no, there you go, that's okay. <laughs> I want to wipe this down my apron, but I'm not going to. Now the last bit that I used is there, and we don't need as much to make the lids. So, here we go. We know how big our pie tin is. You could just do these in um, on pie plates, big ones, whatever. Uh, I like to do these, as I said, because it portions them out. I know how much I've got in the freezer. Um, and it's really quite an economical way of doing this. Right, all I'm going to do now is damp the edge of that pastry. Make sure you really have damped it because we don't want that all to spill out. Place your pastry on the top and then push around. My sons call this the Monaghan thumbprint because <laughs> this is the way I do my pies. Now, if you want to get artistic, um, like one of my friends, you can make leaves, flowers, whatever onto that. Um, I tend to code, if I'm doing uh, chicken pies, I do the Monaghan thumbprint. If I'm doing beef, then I may put, be good and put a B on there, uh, or I might use a fork around the edge. I'm back with my pies. I actually got six out of the mix um, and I'm but I'm only going to cook two of these what I'm going to do is flat freeze all these pies and then I'm going to put in freezer bags and then take them out as I need them and um, this is such a cost-effective way of making uh, food for your freezer to fill it up you might not want pie three days running but over the course of the month um, you can have that once a week or however you choose. Pastry is absolutely foolproof. These will cook up beautifully. Now I'm going to put these in my oven at 180 degrees for 35 minutes. But before I do that, I'm just going to brush a little beaten egg over the top of these and they will look beautiful. I'll see you when I've cooked these. Well, I've cooked my pies and I am so pleased with them. Melissa, this is for you. I attempted to do some decoration on these. Um, a friend of mine, Melissa, uh, did make one of my other recipes, uh, the raised vegetarian pie. Um, she did such a good job of it. She absolutely did. She made all these sort of decorations to go on the top and it looked so professional. So here we go. Melissa, that's as good as it gets. Without further ado, let's have a go. I'm going to cut this through. Oh, look at that pastry. Just falling to bits there. Look at the heat coming out of those. But look at this. Look at the filling. It is absolutely beautiful. Now this pastry is completely and utterly foolproof. You just can't get it wrong. Um, really, it's so forgiving, it's untrue. Look at this, packed with chicken and mushrooms. As I said, and leeks. As I said earlier, if you are vegetarian, you can make this pastry exactly as the recipe states. You can make the sauce exactly as the recipe states. The only difference would be you would omit the chicken and you would increase your mushrooms. Uh, probably, 
I'll put the measurements on anyway, but I would have thought by, you would increase it by 200 grams, easily. Now to taste. Mm. That is good. I mean, I've been making these for years. Look at this crumbly pastry. Mm. What more is there to say? That is a tasty pie. Now, with my recipe, you'll get six of these pies out. Um, I doubled my recipe and I've made 12 pies. Um, I've put 10 into the freezer. Um, they're currently flat freezing and then I will bag them up and just take these out and cook from frozen. The only thing I'll do is put a bit of milk or beaten egg on the top, pop them in the oven on 180, 35 minutes, Bob's your uncle, it's done. Well, this is totally cost effective. And if you like what you saw today, please share, please like, subscribe to see me making more cost effective, beautiful, Tasty food. Thank you for watching.